co-founder and CEO of SellAnyHome.com, so it's the region's first and largest home buying service online. Um, Malik Al Shahab, uh, co-founder of Golden Sense, our biggest uh, online store for um, perfume. Yeah. Would you mind also telling us a little bit about your business? What's your business? What's your business model? So basically what we are doing, we are selling uh, international brands uh, on our platform, targeting um, the Saudi market 100%, doing a double uh, million dollar uh, in revenue. Yeah, so. Okay, can I also ask you, Omar, what you are doing as a business? Uh, so it's fairly simple. We're actually trying to shorten and speed up the real estate sales process. Uh, so if you're a seller, we give you an offer within about 30 minutes. If you're a buyer, we give you properties that are already pre-negotiated and pre-curated for you to actually suit your needs. Thank you. So let me direct the first question, actually. And tell me a little bit about what, how do you choose the right investor? And I want to direct that to you, Omar. How do you choose the right investor? And we don't want to have one investor. We want to have an investor that believes in you as a person, you with your partners in the company, and also in the vision that you have. Yeah, I think uh, the vision is the first and most important one for us. Uh, uh, and I think for any startup, because the business model usually changes along the way. And you always look for an investor that could actually add to your business model and, and enable it to get better and better over time. But the vision doesn't actually change. And you want an investor that comes in and sees the big picture, sees the impact that you could have on the market, let's say, within five years, uh, and, and sees the benefit for them. So, so especially strategic investors. Uh, um, so I think that's really, really important for us. So business model isn't that important. Vision is okay how about you how do you pick the right investor um, so actually when it's come to investors you need to uh, to introduce yourselves uh, to uh, many many of them um, so I wouldn't say it's only picking the investors as they are just waiting for you um, it's actually also as an interaction with them to know what are the purposes for this investments and uh, if they are able to help you for growth. We saw in uh, many startups that uh, the investors played uh, an important role to bring a startup from, from a level to the next level. So uh, for us, uh, in our case, what we did, we chose, the, we, chose, we chose an investor who are strong in the media, like uh, Shuwei Group, and we chose uh, um, an investor who are very strong in the Saudi market, like Saudi Aramco. And additional to that, as an e-commerce business, uh, uh, you are doing logistics. So uh, for in this case, uh, we had the honor to have Bomba on board. Yeah, so uh, we try to uh, find an investors who can support us in many, in many uh, uh, topics and sectors. So that's uh, the way how we did it. But uh, the price here, that it will take a long time. So uh, if you are able to wait, if you, have, if you are profitable, and uh, you can wait a year, then do that. Otherwise, take the next ticket. Yeah. Uh, Omar, and I will ask that question to you as well later, Malik. When you expose yourself to a lot of investors, and you have to do that in order to get the funding, I'm sure that not every, every single meeting that you will have will go well. And I'm sure there will be actually quite unpleasant experiences, and you <laughs> smile when I say that. But how do you... As a, somebody who's seeking investment, how do you deal with these rejections? Uh, actually, I was smiling because I, I slightly disagree from meetings not going well. I think every single one of my meetings with investors have gone extremely well. Whether they funded or not is a different discussion. Um, but I, I think it's, it's what you take out of that learning, right? So I really believe that every one has gone well because the ones who don't want to invest have very valid reasons and very good points and very good, uh, 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 you know, that they have their own personal view and vision on, on how to do things. And that has actually helped us uh, have better pitches with other investors who've uh, really seen that. So it's, it really is, is a work in progress to actually uh, um, you know, get to a point where an investor sees that value. And every single one of the meetings that you'll have with investors go in thinking that no matter what happens, you're coming out on top. Either they give you money or they give you knowledge, but they're giving you a lot. So, so there isn't really any meeting that I've had that wasn't highly valuable. So it is really a learning journey for you. The more rejections you get, the better you and your product gets. Was it the same for you, Malik? 
So usually as a, as an entrepreneur, you need to learn that you, that you try and fail. No? Otherwise, it's not the right thing for you. Um, you are starting and doing something really new. It's not uh, uh, renting an apartment or building a real estate. It's, it's a really new industry. So I would say try again. And, um, and it's, it's not the first conversation that you will get an yes. Uh, the money is not just waiting for you there. Um, in our case, we had a funny uh, story that uh, one of our investors um, rejected us at, uh, the seed, uh, at the seed round. And uh, now he is uh, fully active and fully, uh, fully involved in Golden Sand. So try and try and try until you get your yes. Otherwise, go to the next guy. So uh, I, think, I think in general you need to learn that you will hear a no rather a yes. Uh, it's the nature of, uh, of our business. It's the nature of being an entrepreneur. Yeah. Yeah. You just mentioned the seed process. How, how is the seed funding process? Isn't that the most difficult round, actually, that you're going through? Omar, how was that for you? Uh, well, I mean, for us, was was fairly um, straightforward. Obviously, my, my, my chairman and, and partner has started sellanycar.com, uh, which made that process a lot easier for us because there's a business model there that's somewhat similar in creating real-time market coordination. You know, the business process itself could be different, but uh, the idea would be basically to shorten the sales process for a seller and a buyer, or the buy process for the buyer. Uh, and so the seed round was fairly straightforward for us, um, but you, you, we, we started looking a lot more at analyzing the market itself, right? It's a lot more high level, the addressable market. Uh, is that a problem that we're solving, et cetera, et cetera. So there's still a hypoth uh, you're still hypothesizing in terms of how you can actually go to market. Whereas now that we're preparing for a Series A, it's a completely different ballgame, right? So, so it's about the metrics and, and your growth and your unit economics and, and how you're going to scale and how you're going to remain profitable, et cetera, et cetera. So the conversation is very, very different from C to, to Series A. And I think yeah. that the, the journey itself is also very different. Yeah, I can see that. You want to add something, Malik? Um, to, um, to the seed round? Um, no, not really. So for us, it wasn't that easy because uh, we were uh, in Saudi uh, and, uh, and at that time in 2014, um, the startup um, ecosystem, uh, um, especially in the eastern region and Saudi, it wasn't there. And uh, uh, when you try to raise anything, everybody is compared it uh, with, uh, with other things like uh, the return on investment at that time in real estate. It was, it was so amazing that nobody will invest anything in, 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 uh, in a website. So um, I think we have now a new realities. It look uh, much different. What we did, we tried, we failed. We traveled back to Europe. After 90 minutes, we get our money and traveled back to Saudi. So um, 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 you need to find a time where, we say, where you say, OK, I will not try anymore in this part of, of the world. I will go somewhere else. Um, yeah, so how we do it, as I said, we travel to, back to Germany, we pitch there, we got the money, travel back to Saudi, expand our business, and uh, now we are here. Fantastic. It's, it's a lot of trial and error, isn't it? It really is. I would like to see if there are any questions from the audience at this point in time. We can take maybe one or two questions if we have any. So far there are none, so I will continue with my questions for you. Malik, I would like to ask you, how important is it to have a clear vision of deploying raised capital? Of course you have a business plan, but again, how important is the vision? Um, so I think you need set uh, priorities. Um, I think that you investors uh, need to see a return on investment in, uh, in a short period. So you need to prioritize things. So you're not, you're not going to invest a significant amount in one thing will, will show you results in two years. Um, so at the same time, uh, you are here also in two years. Um, so prioritizing things. Um, you are a logistic company, you are also a tech company, you are 
a retailer, you are everything. So I would say some people will identify themselves as a tech company and go really heavily in tech and leave the retail part or leave the logistics part. So balancing. Balancing. Omar, what would you like to add? Uh, for, for us, actually, it's predominantly breaking down the overall vision because especially, you know, getting people to buy real estate online isn't exactly for the faint-hearted. So, so when we're looking to deploy funds and we're putting the plan in place and now that we're discussing in our next round, uh, it's, it's really breaking that grandiose vision into very achievable next steps that get us kind of on, on that journey, right? So 30 years ago, no one bought suits online, and now that's, that's how everybody buys suits, or very true. a lot of us, right? So, so that journey is, is, is for the long haul. It's a marathon, it's not a race, and you break down that vision into individual small goals, it becomes a lot easier for them to understand why that money is being deployed. And of course, and I think, you know, you would agree when we're talking about, you know, making a name for yourself or, or trying to, 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 to invest in, in the marketing, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it happens with awareness, consideration and conversion. Awareness is a lot fluffier than conversion, right? So for us looking at tech conversion and, and dollar spent, dollar, dollar in, uh, it's a lot easier for us to justify the short term, but then you can't forget the long term and, and awareness and, and awareness will drive consideration and drive conversion over over a long time as well. Um, so those are those are things that are constantly kind of debated with with my board as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, tell me a little bit. You must have you said there was a lot of trial and error. If you look back at your journey, how would you do things differently, and what would you do differently? Uh, you know, I, I started, so I come from a corporate background and obviously my partner has been, has been an entrepreneur for, for a while now here. Um, so so uh, right from the onset, I thought that, you know, failing, failing fast and failing quickly and failing often is okay as an entrepreneur. So I kind of walked in with that kind of mindset. Um, you know, don't be too proud of the product that you've launched, otherwise you've launched too late. You come in with that mindset and you still fall in the same old traps that everybody else would fall. And I remember the first four weeks I spent uh, an exorbitant amount of money in four weeks of my life trying to work on a contract for one of the business models that we were implementing. And I think we changed that business model and six weeks later, we never used that contract. Uh, and, so, and so we spent a lot of money, we spent a lot of time doing something. And so in, in, in hindsight, it would be to really constantly remind myself that you know, don't perfect it before you launch. Don't perfect, you, this might not work. Theoretically works, works well, but then if you're actually going to put it in practice and it doesn't work, don't spend too much time and energy leading up to that. Just launch, figure it out. If it's, if it's good, then you, you work almost backwards to, to fix it. And that's always difficult because it's really against human nature. Yes, I believe that. Malik, what would you do differently? Um, actually, nothing. I think nothing. Um, it, was, it was okay. Um, I think we did it correctly that we started in the Saudi market. I think uh, we had also correctly that we have uh, maybe Shuari on board, Aramco on board, other investors on board. I think it was, it was successful uh, a journey until now and we are very excited uh, about, uh, about the future. Okay, when you say excited about the future, would you like to give away just a little bit of what's next for you? Because I know that you're working actually on quite a few things in the background. No, I think, I think it's quite, now it's quite public. So for us, as we started with the perfume uh, um, as a main product. Um, for us, uh, the nature move, it will be uh, uh, cosmetics. Um, we did that actually, uh, uh, um, 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 we did that because we wanted to focus on one thing. We wanted to focus on one market and we wanted to focus on one product. And we, would like, we wanted also to master that. So for us now, it's the, nature, the next step is, is, is going uh, uh, to wider range of products, having a wider range of, of beauty, uh, uh, which is uh, makeup and cosmetics. And uh, of course, uh, going to the next uh, neighbor markets uh, where we are now, like UAE or Kuwait. So you're expanding on two frontiers at the same time. Correct. Quite challenging. What's next for you, Omar? There must be also something in the basket, no? Uh, yeah, I mean, we started with Dubai. Uh, so our plan, um, if, you, if you count the nine, nine largest city and, and, and the GCC, the value of residential market exceeds $100 billion. 
so obviously those are cities that we want to tap into. So uh, we're closing our round of funding hopefully this year, uh, Series A. And uh, once we do that, then, then it's about expansion. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we are already at the end of our time. I think the best way to describe is really if you want to make it, you have to learn, learn, learn. You have to try, you have to fail, and then you're going to have to do it over and over again until you succeed. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to our panelists.